What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We have a bit of a kind of an unscheduled video, but I think that this one needs to come out before like a first drive or anything with our new ZL1 Camaro. And why? Because this has been the number one question, which I've already answered in two videos and I don't understand why people keep asking, but here you go. Let's make a dedicated video. Why did we not buy a 2020 and up GT500? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. And if you hear me out for just one second, I promise that we'll keep it as PG as possible. Uh, because uh, the internet is full of opinions and, uh, you know, everybody's right to do so. But the past 24 hours since the release of the video of the reveal of this car, it's been interesting. Um, but anyway, I think that uh, after you hear what I have to say, uh, you'll understand things a little bit more. If you could just have just a couple of moments of your time, I promise we'll be short and sweet and this won't be a super long video. So without further delay, let's dive into it. Why did we not get a Shelby 2020 Shelby GT500, GT350s, 350Rs, uh, maybe even older Mustangs? I'm going to discuss all that very quickly. Why I chose the direction that I did and ultimately what it comes down to, guys, is price. So price being the key factor there, yes. Um, but also there is some other contributing factors of guys I just didn't really want another S550. I've had four of them. All. I've already had four of them. And I wanted to look at something different. You know, we all have our favorite restaurants, but we don't eat there every day, you know, because then it gets a little bit old and it's good to venture out every once in a while. Everybody has their favorite t-shirt, for example, but we don't wear that every day either. If you catch my drift, what I'm trying to say here is it's okay to change things up. And uh, ultimately, you know, it's, it's my decision at the end of the day. Above all, first and foremost, before we get into the price and all that, um, I am a car enthusiast, and if it uh, handles well, goes fast, I'm all about it. So I'm not a brand loyalist. I do tend to favor Ford Blue. This time I'm choosing a different flavor, and I think uh, if you know this doesn't work out in six months to a year, I can always trade out of it. I'm going to discuss in this video a little bit more about how much this thing actually costs too. So without beating around the bush any further, get back on topic. Let's talk about the 2020 Shelby GT500. Uh, since you've been watching this video for a couple of minutes, here we go. All right, so behind us, obviously, ZL and Camaro. This is a 2018 that I bought with 10,000 miles. The car costs um, almost 65, so it was like 64. So a new or used, won't matter, 2020 and up GT500. They cannot be bought. Uh, at least I have not been successful finding one for under really ninety-five to a hundred thousand dollars. Guys, we're talking about a thirty-five to forty thousand dollar difference. And if you're good with math, I'm not. So I need things like you know car payment calculator, which I'll go ahead and link it down below so you can do your own math on your own. Uh, what does that mean as far as payment, guys? I financed uh, with my down payment. I financed forty-five thousand dollars out the door on this car. My payments went down from my previous 2019 Ford Mustang GT. And we have a track ready suspension. It's already supercharged. It has a little bit of warranty left. If we keep that warranty uh, uh, for any length of time, I don't really know. <laughs> we tend to avoid them on this channel pretty quickly. But anyway, the point being is that a Shelby, let's pretend that we, we took uh, the $20,000, it was you know, a little bit more than that, and threw it down on the same $100,000 car. Uh, Shelby GT500. You're going to have a payment insanely high, much higher than my mortgage payment. At $100,000, guys, you can do your own math on what over, let's say, 72, 75 months or thereabout, depending on whatever your length of time is. Let's say 60 months. Let's say it's 84 months. Let's make it as cheap as possible. 84 months, which I obviously did not do in this car. Let's pretend it's 84 months and then, you know, we take a hundred thousand dollar car and throw down $20,000. So then you're financing 80 grand. You're still a huge payment, guys. It's still way north of what I'm paying on this every single month. That's ultimately what it comes down to is a 35 to 40,000, maybe even plus because ADM. The fact of the matter is that the ZL1s just look good and they are intimidating. I mean, they are aggressive looking. Look at the angles again. Oh my goodness. All of the guys that have orders in right now for, uh, you know, their allocations are getting pushed to 2022s because part shortages throughout the country and this crazy world that we live in. So uh, supply and demand is definitely a big thing, uh, especially in 2021 and will be in the foreseeable future. I don't expect to see uh, any change with the, you know, 
with the new and used car market um, anytime soon, guys. I think we're going to be in this for the long haul. I think it's going to be interesting and it's going to be a roller coaster the whole way through, up and down, up and down. So, um, uh, you know, when I traded in my Mustang, I got a good hefty uh, deal for it, a lot more than I thought I was going to get. And I was very pleased and uh, excited to see it go, you know, onto a fresh start. But, um, you know, why not an older Mustang? I could have bought a cash car, but I've already talked about this in other videos that I do want to do that. I want to buy a cash car but I want it to be a roller and I want to uh, strip it down and build a drag car from the ground up uh, this time instead of a bank owned loaned car, bank owned car, uh, something I may make payments on. So, I mean, for those that are educated and actually take the time to think, they can put, they can do all this math in their head and figure out where I'm coming from and why I chose the direction that I did. Could I buy another Mustang GT? Yeah, sure. But again, we're going older and I didn't want a fifth S550. I've been looking at them for years now. And I kind of wanted to just try a different flavor. And that's okay. I can always come back to one. Remember, we have the S650 eventually coming out too. And I will be in a great position to uh, take this car, this Z01, and trade it in on that if I so choose. I am in this car with a bunch of positive equity. And with the, the market the way it is right now, I expect this car to actually ascend in value. And the same will be with every other car out there. So the Shelby GT500s and so on and so forth will continue to uh, gain value, I would imagine. So that's ultimately where I'm coming from is I think that uh, I did not make the wrong choice, but, and I think that the, the Shelby GT500s are great cars. I've been, I've got a lot of seat time in them on the street and also, you know, road coursing them. They're, they're phenomenal cars. And um, the, I think that you can't go wrong, but this ultimately comes down to the payment that I wanted to go with. Remember, things are crazy right now financially. It's not just cars, it's everything else that's being affected. So I wanted to really consider that. I, something I really considered whenever I was making my uh, my purchase was, um, you know, aside from YouTube and cars and so on and so forth, I have other things that I have to worry about too, like, you know, paying electricity and buying groceries, food's getting more expensive, gas is getting more expensive, everything is getting more expensive. And so that is uh, definitely something that I considered when I bought this car. I could have afforded a GT500, yes, but I chose not to for uh, financial reasons. And uh, I, I think that if you have made it this far in the video, you will probably agree with all that I have said. It's more than just the car and and everything like that. It's 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 this is a life decision. So will we still build this car? Yes, but I've also said that we're going to take our time with it and do things a little bit different. And I want to do some road course stuff with this car as well. So it won't just be for straight line. Ultimately, that is the uh, the rhyme and reason behind my decision making as far as, you know, why not a 2020 and up Shelby GT500 is a $40,000 price difference. Guys, that's about a four to $600 increase in car payment every month, uh, depending on your interest rate. Remember that, that's significant. It's really something that uh, everybody should be thinking about. I love these cars, man, I really do. I love them all. I'm a car enthusiast at the end of the day. Um, I just have always liked what Mustang has offered. But after owning multiple, multiple, multiple S550s, I was ready to pull the trigger on something different. But yes, I chose a car that was a few years old that already had the depreciative hit um, that uh, I think is that, uh, that's also cheaper per month. And, um, you know, it's still a great platform. It handles really well. I really enjoy the car. And uh, this is uh, ultimately my decision why i chose to, to uh, go this route and i don't regret it and i don't think that i'm going to regret it a lot of people out there have their selfish comments and that's fine you can keep them to yourselves or you know share them with somebody who cares because i don't uh, my mind is made up this is the direction that i'm going and uh, if i choose to make it if i choose to go in a different direction uh here in six months to a year i have full freedom to do so and i'll have the financial freedom to do so so, all right, I hope that you understand. I'm gonna wrap up the video. God bless you all, and I'll see you in the next video for a first drive in our new ZL1. And uh, Mustang content's not going away. Like I said, uh, we're gonna try to find a roller and build it from there, and all of my friends own Mustangs, so I expect that none of that content's gonna go away. It just won't be on a broken red 2019 Mustang GT. All of you guys should actually be, um, 
you know, thanking me for finally getting rid of that car so we can actually do uh, things like real content instead of fixing all of the times. <laughs> we'll do things different this time around. And um, I've already got some ideas and it is a Z01 guys. It's a push rod engine. So we will, we will be making this thing chop chop 100%. All right, guys, I'll see you all later. God bless. Bye.